What is going on? Welcome back to Shed Built. In this episode, we're working on the coils. All right, before we get into this episode, I'll just give you guys a little bit of an update and we've got a fair bit to catch up on. Check it out. This is how you change the game. You don't even need to buy a 79. So this is a two post 3.8 ton clear four hoist from Advanced Auto Equip here in Perth. It is a single sided lock release with a pre-wired 15 amp plug. We're pretty lucky that we already had 15 amp wired into the shop. It has parts trays on each of the arms and we had an installer come to do it at the beginning of the week. We were planning on installing it ourselves just cowboying it but we thought for safety reasons we should probably get a professional to do it and he smashed it out so even though it is a clear floor you can still see the amount of working height we have under here get under do whatever you need to do and it is life-changing most of my life working on cars I've just been in the driveway laying on my back getting smashed but uh, now we have all the freedom in the world but that's most of the hoist covered and the big troopy elephant in the room is that the body is now off of the chassis. It was actually quite easy to do. All we had to do was drop the tank, drop all the fuel, and then undo the motor mounts and a bit of wiring up the back there. And then with the hoist straight on the seals and up, the first time we did it, it almost fell off of the hoist because we had the arms set up in the wrong place, basically in the middle there because we don't know what we're doing. and the whole thing tipped backwards. But like the second time, popped straight up, and now we have all the room in the world to work on the chassis. I've taken it outside, given it a, a bit of a pressure clean, and you can see now we'll be able to access all the mounts for the coils, remove all the leaves pretty easily, and the diffs. And because I want to work on that, I don't want the, chassis, the body sitting up on the hoist. So I'm gonna make it up a little body dolly, just tying into these motor mounts there, just a basic frame, and then a long length in the middle to tie up to another frame on the back. I've made one of them in the past, they're pretty simple. We've got all our steel laid out here. I'm about to draw up a little diagram so I know what I'm working on, cut all the steel, and then we'll get it mounted onto the body.
It is a new day. Yesterday I spent the whole day working on this frame here. Got the wheels welded onto it, but I just wanted to take a couple of hours out of this morning just to work on the shed. A lot of you guys want to see what we're doing with this place and how we're going to upgrade it. So today I'm going to work on getting some new lights installed. These are massive LED high bays. Very expensive, very big, very bright. So we got two of them up in there now, and I'll tell you an OSHA violation of a story on how we got them up there. So we parked the troopy, got the biggest ladder that we could find, parked it there, ladder up, wobbling around. It was pretty dodgy. For this one up here, we got that massive ladder, put it on top of the mezzanine, ladder up, she'll be right. But I want to move them and install more because you can see right now they're in the center of the shop and over here where we work, there's kind of not a lot of light. Well, there is, but it just casts a lot of shadows. So I want to move them sort of central above the workbenches. And to do that, I went and got a scissor lift this morning. That is very bright, but that's a scissor lift there on the back of the trailer. So we're gonna pull the scissor lift in here, park it up, send it up, get some lights installed. And I think I might go three on this side and then one just above the hoist over there. So I'll pull the scissor lift out, get it set up, and then dodge in some lights. All right, so we've now got all the lights installed. Even with the scissor lift, it still took forever. And you might be able to notice the difference in here. It is so bright. So we've got two directly above the workbenches and then two in the middle, one over the hoist and one lighting up the center of the shop. So now, today's a complete blowout for cars. So I'm just gonna keep working on the shop. What I wanted to do is mount this electrical cable, retractable cable reel here. And I want it overhead, so you just pull down whenever you need an extension cord, just pull down wherever you're working. And to do that, I'm gonna send a cable from there up on that cross beam through there, all the way across to the office wall. And I'm gonna use a bit of steel cable. Everything here I've laid out, I've just been to my happy place and purchased everything I think I need. I'm definitely gonna cowboy this together, but it should come up pretty well. I'm gonna run this massive steel cable across the roof. I couldn't find any V bearing pulley sort of things like you'll see on the front of like water pumps and idler bearings. I wanted something like that. So what I've got instead is just some rubber wheels that I'm gonna cut a V groove into and they will basically run on top of the steel cable which will be mounted to my cable reel and then you'll be able to pull it wherever you need in the shop. You'll be able to pull it towards you. I've got some turnbuckles and some clamps for the wire because I'm gonna have to cut this down but I'm gonna start drilling the holes, get those eyelets mounted, and then we can run the cable. It is a new day, we're back in the shed. Yesterday we got the lights installed and that power cable. 
And if you're wondering why these episodes can take so long to get out, it's because I get sidetracked like that way too often. Something will annoy me, like having the shadows over here or having extension cords laying across the ground and I will just over-engineer and over-complicate everything I do to try and fix that issue and it ends up just blowing out and taking a whole day. But it is what it is. If you're interested to see more stuff like that, us upgrading the shed or you know making little gadgets or whatever, then uh, let me know in the comments. I thought I'd just chuck it in here and we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah, let me know. But for now, it's a new day. I'm gonna crack on with those frames. I'll probably do them off camera because it's basically the exact same thing as you saw before. Identical, so I'll smash it out and then we'll get it bolted onto the cab. So we've got the Troopy down on its new chassis. Solid axle swap is complete. So you can see how it works here. I've cut these two main runners here at a 45, so you can still access the bolts from underneath. They rest on the original, end. I keep calling them motor mounts. Body mounts, they rest on the original body mounts on top of this big eight mil plate, which I welded on there just for a bit of load spreading ability. So that should push the load out more, more central to this load bearing beam through there, which ties down into another structural beam, which is supported by the big casters. I did originally plan to only put the two gussets in up the top here, but uh, as I was going, I figured a couple of more wouldn't hurt. I was originally also going to add another cross beam tying from this beam down to the main beam through there that ties the two frames together. But um, after installing it, 
gave it a good shake test, the structural shake test, and it was all pretty sound, so I didn't bother. But uh, yeah, that's where the body's gonna be for the foreseeable future. Now, if we slide over here, we've got the chassis. You'll probably be noticing the 60. No, it's not mine, it's Jake's. That's what he's working on. Some of you guys may be interested to see it, so uh, let me know, and we could chuck a camera on while he works away. It's a bit difficult with us both working in here. I'm working on my stuff, he's working on his. So filming might be a bit of a nightmare, but if you're keen to see it, we can try and make it happen. With the chassis, I can now start working on this on the hoist. And to do that, I am gonna pull the motor, figure it might as well. I can tidy up some of the welds and do a bit of grinding inside the chassis through there. I wish I had the hoist and the body off when I did the front end conversion, but it is what it is. Once that engine's out and it's up on the hoist, it'd be so much easier to work on. As you saw, we've now got the chassis completely stripped. All I had to do was drop the tank, remove a couple of cross members, punch out the pins for the leafs, either side, up with the hoist, and then straight out the back. And it's sitting here, ready for the scrapyard, I reckon. But now you can see all the access that we have to the chassis to start being able to weld on the coil hats. But all of that is gonna have to wait until next time because we are well out of time. All right, and that is it for another episode. Now, I know we didn't get as much done on the coils as we wanted to, but at least now the body is off and we have all the access in the world to start working on it. So tune in next week when we start getting the mounts welded onto the frame. Stick around, like, subscribe if you haven't already, you know the deal. And I will see you next time. Cheers for watching. Shh. <laughs> what is going on? Welcome back to shit, nah. All right, and that is it for another episode. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Every time. All right, and that is it for another episode. Now, I, don't, I know.